Hello, is this Danny? Hello. Yeah, it is, yeah. Hey, Danny, how you doing? It's Josh from Metal Temple. Hey, yeah, I'm very well. How are you? Uh, not bad, not bad. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so yeah, so the reason we're talking today is you got a new album coming out this month, January 29th, Earthbound. We do, yeah. Uh, what's different with this album than what you've done in the past? Uh, I think it's a lot more real this time. Um, it's a lot more like a, I'd say like a live sounding album for us. We were kind of tired of making or being <laughs> told that we had to make albums that were, you know, theatrical or had like things like intros and interludes and, and backing tracks and all that kind of stuff that the, the modern metalcore kind of genre is, uh, is filled with and we were kind of sick of that and wanted to make a no frills album that was pretty much you know start to finish how you'd, how you'd see Very Tomorrow as a live act you know rather than something that we couldn't emulate live at all yeah I, I get what you're saying there I went from listening to the Union of Crowns straight into the new album Earthbound and I gotta say it's a completely different animal than anything I've heard from before <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, like, for us, as I said, it was, it was never that we, we couldn't emulate the older albums, but, you know, it was, it was more that raw sound of the feeling of it being live as well, and much like um, bands like Unearth did back in the day, and they, they make albums that, that sound physically real, you know? Yeah, and that's awesome. It was awesome opening up the album, and it just goes right into the balls-out metal. There's no intro, <laughs> no interlude. That first yeah, man, it was... It was uh, pretty much for me. I, I just kept thinking about um, bleeding through the truth and and how he st and Brandon starts, and it was kind of a similar esque vibe for for us. All right. So, what's your uh, what's your favorite song on the new album? Um, it's a difficult one. I would say probably um, probably Earthbound, and, and as cliche as that is to say the, the title track. I just think for me it, it speaks volumes for for the kind of music that we're trying to make. You know, and it was. There's a the one of the main tracks that we were like, yeah, that's definitely a single, and that's that's the one we need to release. Um, and it just shows us off uh, for being a, a fairly heavy band with with our melody side, you know, and and everything releasing that single has kind of made me so fond of it. To you know, obviously everyone's stoked to hear the, hear the album, and it's kind of made me so fond of that by being the first single, obviously. That's cool. Uh, is there any kind of story behind that title track, Earthbound? Uh, the, like it generally runs along the same kind of thing, you know. The whole the whole perception of it is, you know, it has multiple meanings. Earthbound obviously can be seen as as a, that we're all obviously on one earth, and we should be thinking less about borders and and uh, and people coming into our countries, and more about you know actually a world community and actually thinking about the planet for once, rather than thinking about political gain or um, economic gain. But it also stems from thing the realization that we're all bound for the earth which means obviously we're all the most certain thing in life is that we're going to die you know and it, and for me it was that i was in such like a in, in the same way as it echoes the the feel of the album being so like no bullshit and no no kind of intros or interludes and it's kind of that same feeling of you know there's no bullshit anymore this is what it is and and this is what the earth is and this is how we, we feel and it was and it was about not um not biting my tongue anymore and just kind of saying it how it is. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people don't think that way anymore. It really is <laughs> unfortunate, but hey, hopefully we could change the world one person at a time, you know? Yeah, that's definitely, definitely. I wouldn't say I'm on a mission or anything like that, but, you know, hopefully people have become more conscious as, as the older generation kind of stays out. But, so I see you've got some uh, UK and international dates coming up. Do you have any other touring plans coming up for this new album? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to... We obviously go straight out on Parkway, which is obviously huge for us, and doing Brixton. And then we um, we obviously uh, go out to Europe with the Imperial Contour and back on some of the biggest shows we've done in Europe. Um, and then we're pretty much into festival season, which is kind of scary, thinking we're back there already. But, um, you know, we're back there, and we're trying to get to a load of other territories... Um, around the world obviously this is a places that we haven't been in a while it's a places that maybe we've we loved last year and we want to get back to so yeah we're trying to um trying to get that obviously nothing's crazily locked down right now but it's kind of weird this is the first time we've almost had like nearly a two-year plan laid out for us for for where we're going to be but there's certain aspects of it that we haven't locked down just yet and it's kind of like yeah you're going to go on tour internationally and you're like yeah okay where are we going but <laughs> but yeah i mean we're 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 definitely planning to get to as many places as possible with, with Earthbound. 
That's awesome. Um, as far as the international stuff goes, I read an article about you guys. Your old record label tried to get you guys to move to America and change up your <laughs> sound. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was it. Obviously, it's all you know. It's all speculation in regards, to, like you know, lab, um, magazines obviously will take it as far as they can with it being controversy. You know, Artery did a lot of great things for us. They wanted us to come to the states. They got us out to the states. You know, they said we were going to be on massive tours. We were on big tours. You know, and so in that regard, like they did their job and they did it stellar. You know, but it just wasn't working out. You know, in as much you have to be one one fifth of of a band to, and a member to, to be able to get on with other people and sometimes that doesn't work in the same aspect your label is almost like your your sixth band, six band member so mm-hmm. you know and, and it just didn't work out you know they, they had ideas and, and visions for where we wanted to go and, and it was almost a lack of understanding of how much we we had pride from being from England you know and being um, and uh, and having a fan base over here for so long is that you know, they kind of underestimated that, and I think that that led to obviously the sour, sour kind of breakup as it was. So, is the um, you're in a better relationship now with Clear Blast? Everything working out really well with them? Yeah, I mean, it's there's no problems. Nuclear Blast came came straight to us when we um, obviously did what now is uh, Union of Crowns. Like we had the demos for it, and it had no vocals on it, and you can kind of appreciate it. obviously our band is. For the outside world is made up of you know obviously musicianship and all that but it's very heavily made up of two stars of vocals you know myself and jason and we they came to us with the demos and and said you know we love where you're going with this guys we, we want to sign you and, and for us at that time we were like well if anyone's going to have the everyone's going to have the the faith in our band enough to uh enough to like us or just off that then they're going to obviously um be worth being our label you know and, and since then they've they've supported us and they're kind of good because they kind of support us monetary wise and and um and uh getting us out there but they don't put a lot of pressures on us as a band to change or do anything they kind of leave us to it because i think it's kind of like they know what they're doing in the old school sense and we know what we're doing in the new school sense so it kind of couples together to be quite nice yeah, it's nice to see that. Let the band actually do the creative work and let the label support the band. Don't let the label run the band. Yeah, because that's kind of what they're there for. You know, we have a manager that's external to the label that, you know, is more so there to make, make decisions that say we don't want to or we, we have to or, you know, that that generally won't um, that generally won't uh, that will impact us in a negative or positive way, I suppose. So as, uh, as far as the writing and recording process goes for you guys how is this recording and writing process different for you versus your other albums yeah I'm, go- I'm gonna echo pretty much what I said uh, on the first question is that um, it was done in a very much live sense you know and mm-hmm. for us we were we be- we were on tour it marked pretty much a year that we were on the road um, uh, touring around the UK and Europe and, and Japan and everywhere like that and, and we started writing um, well, whilst we were on, on the road in tour buses and whatnot, and and as much as old school as it sounded, we had like obviously um, home studio kind of set up with the laptops and all that kind of stuff all set up on on the road, and we kind of got the um, through January and February we kind of got the the skeleton work of the album all kind of demoed out, um, and then we the recording process was much of the same. We were doing um, basically Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we were in the studio, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday we were playing shows around the UK, like really small shows and and kind of doing crazy, like, intimate shows. And it kind of kept us, I suppose, warm and kind of had us in that, like, mindset of being in such a live environment and then being like, okay, now I'm in the studio. I can't change the way I'm feeling about being on tour. So I'm just going to emulate that live, you know, emulate that in the studio. It was very much like that. And we did four sets of weekends like that. And and then I went into the studio, obviously, and I did my vocals. And because I was kind of warm, I did it in, like, two days. So... It was kind of um, really rapid and long days, but it was it was awesome. It came out great. And then obviously we sent it off to Caleb um, to mix and master, and he he smashed it. You know he did a great job with that, and he gets where they're coming from when it comes to to not sounding overproduced, but having that production element. Yeah, you say you're trying to capture that live sound. When you're playing live in front of a crowd, there's this raw, unadulterated energy that you always get. Is it hard to emulate that in the studio, or did it come naturally for you to just 
rock out like you yeah. do on stage. Yeah, I think, you know, like for me, as a, especially my vocal style is a, you know, I'm very controlled of how I am. And, and even when I look like I'm going the craziest I am, it's more movement rather than, you know, actual aggression or, or that kind of thing, you know. And I think it's, it's very easy to, to think front men are getting absolutely crazy and, you know, and they yelling their voice out. But, you know, it's kind of like for me, it's almost like going through the motions. And, but it's more so that warm feeling, you know, you, you feel like you've been on the road and every vocalist will tell you, it can be the best vocalist in the world, but the the third, fourth, fifth show will always be better than the first and the second because you're not in it yet, you know. And and you find uh, we did a couple of times we've gone on the road for like you know 15, 16, well longer than that, 20, 25 dates without any days off. And even by the 20th date, you feel so in that pocket of being um, ready to be able to perform is that that's always better than say the first day, even though you're fresh. Like it's kind of weird. Yeah, I can definitely relate with you on that one. Um, so I know the album hasn't been released yet, but what's been the general response to it so far? Honestly, it's been awesome. Like it's it's been really really good. I, we were quite without you know blowing our own trumpet, but we were quite clever with the the order of kind of um, the release of each single because we kind of wanted to manipulate people's ears into understanding where we were going with this album. Obviously, we released Earthbound, which is quite a standardized old school metalcore kind of track you know it has the choruses and the big breakdown and and that kind of like driving feel and and then we released memories which was obviously more of a metal track for us you know it was very fast it, it kind of blows people's heads off from the first from the first hit and then and then with last light we wanted to release a song that kind of showed people that our melodic side isn't something that we've forgotten about and, and usually it goes the other way when bands are like trying to show off that they're still heavy and but for us, is that we, we everybody who knows us and knows our band will know that we're not going any lighter. That's not not what we're about. We've only ever progressively got heavier. So we wanted to show fans that we were still obviously very much into writing melody and, and almost intricate melody in places as well. So you know, it, it's been great. You know, I can't. The fact that anybody listens to us is is obviously a, an awesome thing, and the fact that we only seem to be you know on the rise at the moment, and you know, it's great. I can't really ask for more. It's, you know, we we want to release songs and we want people to enjoy it and that's kind of happening so we're going to continue to do so yeah that's what it's all about now <laughs> hey, metal fans they're some of the most rabid fans out there <clears throat> they're passionate they love what they listen to but unfortunately in that passion some of them get tied up in a lot of stuff like the genres and everything and um metalcore as a genre has taken a beating over the last couple of years in the metal community and I know you yourself have been adamant that your band, you are metalcore. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on that? Any thoughts on maybe why it's like that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the problem is is that you know people um, when you're pushed into a pocket of music when it comes to like metal, you know, and you're pushed into this like category of of you know, not you're not rock music, you are metal. And, and the great thing about metal, as you said, is that they're so rabid and and people are so quick to be you know a community of metal, you know and and I think the problem with metalcore is it sits so heavily in, in the center of, of, you know, I would say two two to three genres. You know, it's got hardcore, it's got um, a metal, and then you've also got obviously the melodic side of it. So, um, and that's the problem. You know, it's it's, it's works in the favor of metalcore bands to be able to get um, bigger exposure when it comes to you know radio play and TV airplay and and a majority of um, I'd say just generalized fans that maybe don't like heavier music or maybe like heavier music, but you know, not too heavy, you know, and it, you kind of gain a kind of more mass of an audience, you know, you gain some rock fans as well that say never listen to metal, or you gain some death metal fans that kind of dabble in a bit of melodic side, you know, and that's the best bit about it. But coupled with that is that you've also got people that view that as a negative thing, you know, on both sides, you know, have people that are like, what the hell is that screaming? Like, what is that noise, you know? And then you've got other people that quite obviously, you know, being on Nuclear Blast, you'd be able to see it straight away when you look on any YouTube video we've ever released. You know, it's if you have those people that, because Jay Sings view us as any less, or because we don't have, you know, hair past our shoulders, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but that I've endorsed, is that, you know, that, that we're any less metal, you know? And, and it's a shame, but it's something that you kind of grow up with. And I don't think, honestly, it's, it's something that's changed. We've been about for nearly 10 years now, and, and when we started, Metalcore was exactly the same. You know, even when bands like Atreyu, Killswitch, and Still Remains were as big as they were, and like 
people still had that problem with with the fact that it has singing, you know, and 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 I don't think um, I don't think almost the the influx of like say electronics and and all kind of that has helped because I think that makes it more of a joke in some people when it comes to like um, it sounding like R and B or poppy or anything like that. But you know, it, each to their own. If people if people immerse themselves into it into any genre, that counts for you know pop rock metal metalcore death metal if you immerse yourselves into it you will honestly find something that you enjoy you know and i i wholeheartedly believe that about any genre you know and i think people should do that before you know they they kind of make their mind up but that's that's just metalcore man it's, we've had it pretty much our entire career and and i think it's only on the rise at the moment you know people are actually coming out and saying no like this music's great and they're flying the flag for heavy music which is what we're trying to do you know Hey, it's the uh, it's the best of both worlds. You got the metal, you got the rock, you got the hardcore. Like you said, you got a little bit of a progressive element in there. Yeah, so. yeah, you know, and I think that's the best way to be is that you know we never write with with like a calculated mind. You know, in that way, we you know this album obviously we said we wanted it to be more raw and, and live feeling, but we don't write to be like okay, well, this is our you know rock song or this is our really heavy metal song. We're just like. We write a song and go, yeah, that's really cool. Let's let's write something for it, you know. Yeah. So um, it's been a rough couple months for the uh, rock world. We've lost quite a few legends: Glenn Frey with the Eagles, David Bowie, Scott Weiland, and Lemmy Kilmister. You have any mm-hmm. thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I was talking to someone about this the other day. You know, it, it does obviously seem quite shocking that it's, it's all in the last few months, but. Unfortunately, this is this is the age we're getting at, you know. And I said this to someone the other day, you know, it's it, you get to a certain they're not ages, they they shouldn't have, you know, they they were too young to be done. But these are people that you know were partying hard back in the day, you know. They they went hard, they took life as it should be, as 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 full as it was, and and especially people like Lenny and, and Bowie, you know, they they've lived through some crazy crazy times, you know, when it comes to music and and the heights that they got, you know, the heights that our band will never, ever reach, you know, and I wholeheartedly believe that, and it's not a bad thing, it's just, it's that those don't exist, like, anymore, those crazy fucking parties where you, you get flown around the world and cry the jet as a rock band, and, you know, you're smoking and drinking and taking whatever you can, you know, and and we're also of that age, you know, you get to, I'd say, your life works in cycles, you get to, like, your 20s, and you see everyone around you kind of getting engaged, getting married, and you get to, like, your 25s, and everyone's getting, you know, engage uh, everyone's having kids and stuff and then you hit you start hitting you know your late 20s and 30s and, and unfortunately that's when the upper generations you know unfortunately start to pass away and i think that's what's really crap about the moment and it's it's winter you know it's everyone's so surprised about it, but it, if anyone that's quite frail at the moment is going to pass away it's going to be around these times you know unfortunately as as it is that, that these people have it's and it is a shame it's a massive it's a massive shame because every one of them is very influential in their own right you know there isn't one on that list that you go well you know they yeah they did all right in their own genre but they've all they've all touched the world kind of thing yeah i could definitely i feel you on that one i've done a little bit of touring myself and you know like you said it's it's the whole culture has changed it's not sex drugs and rock and roll anymore it's more or less <laughs> uh bottled water public showers and rock and roll yeah yeah get into get into uh the hotel as quick as you can exactly <laughs> So, uh, who are your uh, personal inspirations? Who got you to play music? Um, I come from like obviously I'm I'm like 26, so I come from the uh, the whole new metal generation of, of kids that, especially in the UK, like every kid around who didn't care if they were like sports kids or you know jocks or geeks or anyone, they all listened to new metal at the time, you know. And I, for me, it was, I was I was always a drummer in a band, and and then I. Uh, I saw Papa Roach and I was like, that, that is what I want to be. I want to be in a band so, and I want to be a front man. So I kind of turned into a bit of a front man in, in like year seven, year eight of, of school, which is like, you know, 14, 15 and uh, no, 13, sorry. And then, um, and then when I was, uh, latter part of, um, school, I kind of, uh, got into bleeding through massively. Um, like I was a huge fan of Brandon's vocals. Um, and, uh, I kind of wanted to, uh, emulate that sound you know and how and how his vocals sounded you know and and so i kind of wanted to be in a, a what would say now is probably a metalcore band a hardcore band a progressive hardcore band and and so i joined 
enjoying B2 when I was 16 or 17 years old. So, yeah, I mean, probably my biggest influences are um, people like Bleeding Through, uh, and the band is probably like Kill Switch, you know, uh, As They Die and Darkest Hour, Unearth, like the, the metalcore masters, really, of the, the pioneers of the genre, I suppose. Now, if you could tour with any band, who would you choose to tour with? <laughs> Definitely Slipknot. It's got to be, doesn't it, really? Going right for the yeah, job, I mean, huh? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to tour with anyone, if someone asks you that question it's, and they're a genie, then you might as well say the uh, the biggest band in yeah. the genre, really. So, yeah, probably that. All right. Um, do you think what happened in Paris is negatively affecting hard music? No, I think it's negatively affecting um, the world more than it is actual yeah. music. I think I think it negatively affects the perception people have of a religion or the perception people have of someone's skin colour rather than music, you know. It was freak and an accident that it happened and there was a lot of people that have that survived, which is a great thing. But, you know, obviously there's unfortunately a lot of people that died in that. In that and, it, and I think it negatively affects um, uh, probably public events more so than anything I think there's a constant fear and the media don't help you know they they yeah. scare monger people into believing that every time you you're publicly gather, gathered if someone with that kind of looks remotely um, Arabic or you know or you know looks like they come from Saudi Arabia or Iraq or Iran then you should be scared of them that they're gonna you know hurt someone you know and that's that's how it's negatively affected the world and and you know and the, it's, that is a shame, you know, because it's these extremists. They're not a religion; they're just extremists, you know. Regardless, you get them in every single religion, you know. Yeah. And that's my view on it, you know. And I understand that people have their own views on it, but my views are every single religion you have. You know, I'm Christian. I was brought up Christian, you know. But every religion, you have Christians that are completely whacked out and they don't know what they're talking about. You have Catholics, Jewish people, Hindu people, Sikh people, Muslim people. It doesn't matter. They're still bent on hurting other people that don't believe in the same way, thing as them so that's you know that's just me on that yeah it's it's pretty sad that people can't separate the uh, the religious side of things the peaceful the seeking answer side of things from the extremists who ultimately are just hell bent on destruction that's what boils that's the thing to. man all, all they're trying to do man is indoctrinate um, impressionable people and that's what these people are and it's sad because they, we should be spending more time educating our young to be able to understand when they are being indoctrinated rather than say, well, no, you you believe in um, Allah, so that's it, and you know, you're one of these people and you're gonna you're gonna turn into one of them. It's absolutely bullshit. You have people every single day in America and in England and in Australia and these westernized what they would say was westernized countries of privileged westernized countries that believe in God one god our god you know and, and they believe in that that would wholeheartedly you know tell someone from a different skin color that they're lesser educated than them or you know part say that two guys can't get married because they love each other you know that's it just makes no sense if, if you believe in god and you believe or in gods or you believe in anything or if you just believe in being a good person generally that always the same message you should just respect everyone how you want to be respected yourself and then you get on in the world that's just it's just the way it is it's easy yeah um so what is your preference to play festivals or clubs uh it's a bit different you know like i would say probably the grandeur of playing festivals is great you know and it's, it's the the speed and everything you know it's, it's like you turn up and it's like a whirlwind the minute you get there it's like you're backstage you get in catering and then you're on stage and then it's crazy and then you watch a million other bands and it's just the whole day is like a, an event kind of thing even if you play like loads back to back but I mean nothing beats the intimacy of a club as well you know it's just that's where you be as a metal band or a hardcore band that's where you grow up isn't it you know it's like that's your you forge your your style you forge your image you forge everything you've got as a band or as a bigger well known band is you forge from those little clubs so yeah I'd probably say club style though Okay, now I got a, a two for one question for you here. Um, what what are you listening to right now, and what is your guilty pleasure band? <laughs> I I don't believe in guilty pleasures. I think you should be able to listen to what you want, but I get the question. So um, I've been listening to a lot of Adele. 
to be honest, and I think that probably couples into it. I think that new album is amazing, so I think that's really good. Um, what else have I been listening to? Uh, I listened to Four today, actually. I went back and listened to um, some of their first albums because I hadn't heard them in ages. And yeah, I went back and listened to a couple of Four Today's records, and they truly are a really good band. So yeah, probably them at the moment. But my guilty pleasure, let's say, it's Adele, Stroke, Justin Bieber. <laughs> All right. Um, who is your favorite live act to see? Uh, Ramstein, definitely. Awesome. Just because they're just absolutely outrageous. Yeah, I'd, uh, <laughs> there's no other way. I've seen him. We played with them um, in Switzerland, and then in we played Donington the next day. And yeah, you just like, what the hell is going on? But it's amazing. They truly are the best live band in the world. I, I think anyway. Yeah, they're one of the few I haven't gotten to see yet. I'm waiting for them to come back around. Hopefully soon. Yeah, they're so good. <laughs> now, for yourself, is it challenging being in a van that you, in essence, have two vocalists between yourself and Jason Cameron? Is that a challenge for you? No. Yeah, I think it I think it really works. I think when we've been together for, like, years now, you know, like, since 2006, 2007. So, it's kind of like we know each other so well now. We know he'll, like, spot out pot, spots in, like, a demo and be like, uh, right, that's where you're going to be and and uh, I'll be like oh cool but I was thinking you're going to be here so we're kind of like consciously always thinking it's almost like we're one unit and we both know what we're doing kind of thing like so yeah, I've never we've never run into anything anything that bad when it comes to like oh I want to be on that port I want to do this and that we kind of just throw it out there and whatever sounds best we go for it you know? yeah that's cool it seems like you guys work together and you're really cohesive on your records and all the videos I've seen of you it seems like you two really work well off of each other yeah I mean it's as I said I, if you just got done to after you know all this time I think you kind of become a family you know and it, as cliche as it sounds I think we're all like brothers so it's kind of like sometimes you have disagreements but you're kind of like well for the best of the band let's make that decision alright well that's uh, that's about all I got for you here your new album comes out January 29th um, anything you want to say yeah. to the fans that might be listening no just that we we will come over to America <laughs> it's, it is going to happen it's just when <laughs> we are going to come and it will be awesome when we do and hopefully everyone likes the record awesome I'll have to make it out for that one well uh, thanks <laughs> thanks for your time Danny I appreciate you answering all my questions no worries thank you for asking them and calling me all the way from America that's awesome hey no problem man like I said I hope to, hope to hear right. you guys soon hope to see you in America soon yeah awesome thank you hey thank you see you later